How you doing people? Hope you're well, not skimping on your training. Okay, what's he got today? Today, another good one. I'm back on the plyometric burpees. Last time I did plyometric Navy Seals. Today it's gonna to be plyometric six counts. So if you're not familiar with them, Navy Seals have three push-ups in them and the six counts have one push-up. So with these plyometric six counts, you start off in the kneeling position, you jump straight into the squat position, into the push-up, and then straight into a tuck jump. I think the originator of this was Tony at Still In The Game. Quite enjoyed the session last time, so I thought I'd give these a go. So I've got to do 100 of these for time. I then get a couple of minutes rest, and I'm gonna do 100 normal six count burpees with the weighted vest. Another couple of minutes rest, and then I'm gonna go into some plyometric jumps. One minute lunge jumps, one minute rest, one minute squat jumps, one minute rest, one minute heel to backside burpees, one minute rest, one minute star jumps. I'll then pick myself up off the floor and go home. And as the Romans used to say, let us get into it, us. Okay, not sure what I'm babbling on about there. Not convinced the Romans did used to say that, but there you go. That's what one too many training sessions does to you. Anyway, plyometric six counts, what's all that about? Well, it ain't pretty, that's for sure. This is one that uh, Tony at Still In The Game does, but I actually haven't seen too many people try this. I think I saw the Dutch Destroyer try something that had the initial jump up move, but that's about it. I think people get put off by that move, which I can understand because it looks like it could be bad for the knees, but to be honest, I don't get any repercussions from it. I think once you get the timing of it, you realise it's not so bad. The whole move, of course, gets pretty cardio, and then if you start creating time checkpoints for yourself, you're putting more pressure on. But it's a good thing to do. Competing against the clock is something I always recommend at some point in your training. Otherwise you can just lose track of where you are fitness wise and you can easily slip back. It's just that inescapable objective measure. I did remember to do the squat movement and stand up after the tuck jump this time, which does add that little extra to the move as well. I'm currently doing a burpee session about once a week. I think if I wanted to get better at the six counts of the Navy Seals, etc., I'd need to do them more often than that. But it's just a case of what do you sacrifice to do that in terms of the other forms of training. At the moment, I'll do four or five sessions a week, and I tend to number grade them. So a one is a standard full session, or a 1.5 is 50% more than the standard session, and two is a double session. But then of course I end up breaking them further down into maybe a 1.2 which might have been a full session with an extra finisher etc. So if in a week I did four sessions one of them may have been a 2 or a couple of 1.5s in there. The actual sessions I'm doing at the moment are usually something like a session like the one I've done today then another day I may do a squash session where I play someone at condition games, which are games with certain restrictions, and I do court sprints between each game. That may last up to an hour. Another day I may do some sort of running, either a straight run or hills or step running. And again, I could add more to that by doing some jump work after the run, for example. Another day, I may do a circuit with more pull-ups, dips, push-ups involved, but with cardio as well. I don't tend to just do strength work alone, unless I do some after I've played squash, maybe. I think that's a remnant of back in the day for squash, when if you were too muscle-bound, it was really a disadvantage and just extra weight you were carrying around and changing direction with. I definitely do more strength work now than I did years ago because a greater amount of strength work was not conducive to the sport. If you look at tennis players, they're certainly not muscle-bound because it wouldn't be of use. Endurance athletes are not really heavily muscled. However, as you get older, I think it's much more important to build muscle and strength to compensate for natural drops in testosterone, maintain bone density, etc, etc. Dr. Rhonda Patrick, who is a cell biologist and co-founder of Found Life Fitness, described vigorous exercise as the best longevity drug out there, and more and more research is confirming that. Just with regards to this session, I'm not sure if doing the weighted vest work second was ideal, as I noticed the extra weight more with the six count burpees. But I was going for time on the plyometric six counts, so I had no option really. 
but it's all good. I ended up in the second half of the six counts with the weighted vest doing sets of 10 with a short break, but then it was nice to take the vest off for the plyometric jumps at the end. So all in all, a nice tough session. It would be good to see more people giving the old uh, plyometric jumps a go because they really do upgrade the cardio, especially when you do them for a minute on each one and it really ups your game on the power aspect as well. Okay, so thanks again for watching. Keep pushing, program's coming soon. I've been bogged down with other work recently, but they are in the pipeline. Hopefully everyone is signed up with Derek Osiris with the uh, World Burpee Day coming up in June. I've got a good strength orientated session coming up, which is a 10 minute EMOM workout, every minute on the minute. Only 10 minutes, so how hard can it be? See you in the next one.
messed up the timing there. Thank you. 
Click, click, dude, trip, 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 trip